Raspberry Pi might have just Sherlocked real VNC. What does that mean? Well, if you're not familiar with Apple history, there was an old third-party app called Watson. It was kind of an everything search with plugins and stuff. Apple integrated a new tool right into the OS called Sherlock that did essentially the same thing. Can you guess what happened to Watson? Apple's done that a few times now, like with Growl, Flux, and Confabulator. Raspberry Pi just announced Connect, a VNC service directly integrated into Raspberry Pi OS 12. Does that really make RealVNC a redundant though? No, not completely. I mean, Raspberry Pi's ambitions for Connect are a lot smaller scale. Raspberry Pi launched Pi OS 12 Bookworm in October last year. They switched from the old X11 window system to a more modern setup using Wayland. But because RealVNC was built for X11, it broke. There's a way to switch back to X11 to get RealVNC working, but after six months, RealVNC still doesn't work with the default setup. RealVNC is a handy way to remote control computers, like my dad uses it. He has a Raspberry Pi at each of his remote tower sites so he can monitor transmitter equipment through their web UIs. It's relatively secure, and it means he doesn't need any site-to-site -site VPNs, just a Pi running RealVNC. Users like my dad started buying Raspberry Pi 5s or upgrading to Bookworm on their Pi 4s and quickly found out RealVNC didn't work anymore, at least out of the box. So instead of waiting for RealVNC, Raspberry Pi launched their free Connect service. It's in beta right now, and it doesn't sound like there's a plan to monetize it, at least not yet. I've been testing it out for a few months, and while it works great, it's not a direct replacement for real VNC. How do I know that? Well, take my dad again. He uses it with Pis, sure, but he also has other computers he manages, like Macs and Windows PCs. He has a multi-user plan and uses some mobile app features that are hard for Raspberry Pi Connect to add since it's just a web UI. Raspberry Pi Connect is more limited, but that's not a bad thing. In fact, I think that's good because the more it would do, the further the software team at Raspberry Pi would be stretched to keep it stable and secure. Building VNC software shouldn't take precedence over making Linux run great on the Pi or making the Pico easy to develop for. Their Keep and Connect really trim. It only runs on Pi OS, on newer Pis, and it doesn't have any VPN features, SSH access, or mobile apps. It's just VNC and a web UI. It's built on top of WayVNC, a solid VNC server. In my testing, the web UI runs great on any modern browser. I've tested it on my Mac, Windows, iPad, even my iPhone. There are a few quirks, and I still hope RealVNC gets full Wayland support, but it's nice having Connect. Setup is easy. You create a Raspberry Pi ID, install RPI Connect, and log in. There's a little widget in the system tray, and you can go to connect.raspberrypi.com on any device to connect to any Pi you set up. I've tested with a Pi 5 and a Pi 4, and I've been testing from home, from my car, and from other networks. The way it sets up the connection, it tries to do a direct peer-to-peer -peer connection, but sometimes it connects through a relay server. It doesn't stream all the data through that relay, but it will hold the connection alive through it, like when you're connecting with CGNAT from a cell phone or wireless ISPs. And it's fast enough for me. I mean, here on the LAN, of course it's going to be buttery smooth. But even at home, I get acceptable latency. You can ignore how slow YouTube is though. This, this is on my Pi 4 and YouTube is just kind of like that on the Pi 4. But generally everything else is snappy and there are some basic remote access features like you can copy text from the remote Pi or paste text to it. And there are some modifier keys like Control, Alt, and Escape down at the bottom. There isn't a way to get it to pop the on-screen keyboard on my iPhone or iPad, so mobile use is limited, but it does work with a Bluetooth keyboard if you have one of those around. The screen resizes to fit your browser window by default, but you can also set a resolution. Or if you have a monitor plugged into the Pi, it'll keep that resolution. In fact, in some of my testing, I plugged in one of these, an HDMI EDID emulator. That way I could emulate having a physical monitor plugged in. Now, one limitation, you can't run Pi Connect on a Pi running Pi OS Lite. It has to be the full PyOS version with a desktop environment. And you also need to have auto login enabled, at least right now. That might change. I mean, remember, this is a beta, so there are some limitations with it. These are all pretty ideal conditions, though. But what happens in the worst case, like when I'm out tethered to my mobile phone with a less than perfect connection? I drove out to a park and tethered my computer to my phone's internet connection through AT&T. And out here, at least, the connection is pretty bad. It's like a one, one or two megabits per second up and down, 500 milliseconds to a full second of latency. So practically the worst case scenario for an urban environment. And uh, things still work. It requires a lot of patience to use it this way. It, it, it's much more pleasant to use it on a wired connection at home or somewhere with a better internet connection. Uh, but it works, and if you're, if you're in a pinch and you need to do something on your Pi at another location, this could work. Um, 
A couple things I, I noticed though, one is that it says that both your device and browser chose to use Connect's relay. So that means that right now the, the metadata for this connection is going from here in St. Louis up to London where they have their main server and then back down to St. Louis through AT&T's wireless network. So that might add a little bit of extra time too. I think they might have plans on having more relay servers around the world. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, but that's one thing to keep in mind uh, when you're on a wireless connection like this and it uses CG NAT or whatever technology to, to make that connection. Uh, the other thing that I think would be nice is if they had the ability to turn off all the animations in the UI. So Wayland on the Pi has like, it zooms in and zooms out when you close windows. And that's just wasting bandwidth because when I close the terminal window and it zooms out, it has to send extra frames for that. And it just, it just bogs things down a little bit. So it'd be cool if you could disable that. And when you close the window, it just disappears right away. Uh, but otherwise, in a pinch, this works. I wouldn't recommend it generally though. And, and this isn't just exclusive to connect. This is a problem with any uh, desktop sharing thing. It, when I share my Mac's desktop over the, over the VPN, it, it does the same thing when you're on a slow connection. That's just, it's the nature of the beast when you're sharing video over a really slow connection, but it, it works. It works. You know, that's the main thing. Uh, it, it's just patience. Patience is a very important virtue to have when you're working over uh, 4G or 5G. So Pi Connect. It can get confused if you have things like multiple monitors, but you can work around that in settings. RealVNC handles situations like that better, just like it works on mobile a bit nicer. But in the end, I think one thing a lot of people might wonder about is trust. Can you trust Raspberry Pi's service since it controls remote access to your Pi? I mean, I do, but I'm a pretty trusting guy. I think if you have deeper requirements, you would probably still want to run your own site-to-site -site VPN anyway. But besides that, one nagging question in the back of my mind is whether it's gonna stay free. That wouldn't be a question, except for the fact that Raspberry Pi is considering an IPO, something I covered a few months ago. If Raspberry Pi goes public, what's to stop someone from coming in later and monetizing Connect? I hope it doesn't happen, but if it does, that'd be annoying. Maybe a paid tier for advanced features someday, but then they're getting into real VNC territory, and I mentioned I think they should keep it simple. That also helps keep it low cost for them to run, which helps keep it free. But am I being overly cautious? I hope so. Raspberry Pis had a decent history with their open source work, so it'd be cool if they eventually open up all the code behind the service too, but even if not, it's nice to have more options, especially simple ones that are quick and easy to get up and running. If Pi Connect meets your needs, great. If not, there's still a place for real VNC. It hasn't been Sherlocked yet. Until next time, I'm Jeff Gearling.